All right, guys, welcome back. Now we all know the importance of forms in a web application. Angular provides three different ways to create forms for our applications. The first one is a template driven approach, which is very similar to Angular 1 forms. The second one is a model driven approach, which is something new in Angular 2. And the third one is a model driven approach with the form builder API. Now in this video, let us learn the template driven approach to form creation. All right, we are going to start off with the Hello World template. You can get a copy of this from my GitHub repo and a link is in the description down below. So when you run npm install and then npm start, we are going to see Hello World in the browser. So let's quickly change this Hello World to template driven forms. Let's save this and when the browser is refreshed, we must be able to see template driven forms. All right, great, our app is working and we can now proceed with the form creation. Now to get access to all the features of template driven forms, we need to import the forms module in our root module. So over here, I'm gonna say import and what are we importing? We are importing the forms module, so forms module and we are importing this from angular slash forms. So now we can include this forms module in our module decorator because our app module is now dependent on this forms module. Now we can create a very simple HTML form with bootstrap CSS in our app component to capture some user data. So in your index.html, make sure that you have a reference to bootstrap. So let's go back to app.component.ts and change template configuration to template URL because the form is going to be pretty lengthy. And this is going to be changed to a path. So in our app folder, we're going to create a file app.component component dot HTML. So now we can create this file, so app.component.html and over here we're going to start off with the div tag and this is going to have a class is equal to container. This is a bootstrap class and then let's have an h2 that just says user form data or user, user just user data and then we can create a form tag and within the form tag, we are going to have five fields that are going to capture this user data. So div, and then the class is equal to form group. So this is again a bootstrap class. This is purely for appearance alone. So form group, and then a label tag. And this is going to be, uh, we don't really need for. So label, and this is going to be name. And then we're going to have an input tag. So the type is going to be text and we don't need a name or a value. But we do need a class. So the class is going to be form control. Again, a bootstrap class. So we need four more of these fields. So I'm just going to copy paste it. So copy two, three, four, and let me also in increase my font size. So there you go. And over here, we need name. The second one, we need an email from the user. And then let's go with street. Let's go with city. And then let's go with postal code. And then at the end, we need a button. So button, the type is going to be submit. And then the class is going to be button and button primary and then the text is going to be just submit. So now let's save this and have a look at our browser to see how the form looks. So we have user data at the top and then we have five fields, name, email, street, city and postal code with a submit button. So this is pretty good and Although this seems like simple HTML, 
Angular's magic is already happening behind the scenes. Now anytime we use this form tag, Angular attaches an ng form directive to the tag that gives us valuable information about the form. So this ng form directive gives us two important things. The first one is it gives us the values from different form fields and the second one is it indicates whether the form is in, is in a valid state or an invalid state. So over here in our form tag let's go ahead and add this ng form directive which is already created for us and assign a reference variable to this. So I'm going to call this user form and this is going to be equal to ng form. So now we have an instance of ng form assigned to user form. So this variable now represents this entire form. And it just so happens that when a user clicks on this submit button, an ng submit event is fired. So let's also capture that event. So event binding, if you remember, is going to be within parentheses. So the event fired is ng submit and this we're going to assign a handler. So what are we going to do when we submit the form? We are going to capture the form values and log the values. So I'm going to call this handler on submit and this is going to take a parameter which is nothing but this value. So user form is going to have a property called dot value. So this is going to give us the value and we can go back to app.component.ts and over here in the class we can specify on submit we are going to take a parameter so this is going to be value of type any and log to the console so console.log value so basically what we are trying to achieve is gather all the data from the form and then display it in the console. So when I save this and head over to our application and when I press F12 to have a look at the console. All right, let's see console. Now when I enter something, let's go with, let's go with uh, um, Rob and then email is rob at email.com. All right, let's just go with the two values. And when I click on the submit button, you see that nothing is captured. Now, this is because we need to register our form controls with the ng form directive. ng form directive. So right now we have an ng form directive, but there is no indication that these form controls belong to this ng form directive. So for that, we specify two things: a name attribute and an ng model directive. So for every input element, we need to have a name. So name is equal to, and I'm going to call this name, and then an ng model directive. So ng model. And then similarly, I'm going to copy paste this. So two, three, four, and five. Now this is name. This is going to be email. This is going to be street, this is going to be city, and then finally postal code. So now every control that is registered with this ng model is going to be part of this user form dot value. So when I save this and head over to the browser and the application is reloaded, so I'm going to go with rob and then rob dot email the street, let's go with Baker Street, City, uh, London, and then postal code, let's go with a random number, one, two, three, four, five. So now when I click on submit, we get this object. So name is Rob, email is Rob.email, street is Baker Street, City, London, and then postal code, one, two, three, four, five. So each of these names that we have specified is going to be appearing here in our console along with the value that is specified in form.value. Now let's say that we want to group together certain fields. For example, the street, city and postal code needs to be logically grouped into an address field. So for that, all you have to do is 
add a div tag, so div, and assign <coughs> ng model group directive. So this is going to be address. So basically we are telling that we have a couple of ng models and we want to group them together and then refer to that as address field. So now I can copy form groups and move it inside this address field. So now when I save this and the browser is refreshed, let's go ahead and enter the same thing. Rob, rob.email, the street is going to be Baker Street, city is going to be London, and then the postal code 12345. But this time when I click on submit button, it's going to be object that is submitted, name Rob, email rob.email, but then we're going to be submitting an address which is in turn an object. So when I expand this and expand address, we get city London, postal code 12345, and then and then we get the street which is Baker. So this is in the alphabetical order. So this is how you create a form and then submit the data so that it can be you know, sent to a server. Now let's take it a step further. Let's say we want data binding. For example, when the user loads the form or when the page is loaded, we want certain data to be pre-filled into the form. So for that, all you need to do is create a property. So let's create a property called my name and assign it a value of, let's go with Brandon. So now we can go back to our HTML file and where we specify, okay, let me close this. Where we specify ng model, we can use square brackets for data binding. And this is going to be bound to my name, which is what we have just created. So when I save this, and when the page is reloaded, you see that Brandon is already pre-filled. So this is how you achieve data mining. And a practical example you can think of is, let's say you're placing an order on an e-commerce site and you come to the shipping address. Now the shipping address is usually pre-filled with the user registration address. So this is how data mining is achieved. You use ng model, square brackets, and assign it the property. So ng model is equal to my name. And similarly, we can even have two-way binding. So if you remember banana in a box model, so parentheses for banana and the square brackets for box and my name. And then I can have a paragraph tag and then use interpolation and use my name. So when I save this, it's going to display Brandon at the bottom. So Brandon and when I type something, it is going to give me a live preview of what I'm entering. So this is how we achieve two-way binding. All right, so that's pretty much how you create a template-driven form. You create an HTML form, you use ng form directive and then assign it a reference variable. You use ng submit and capture all the values using user form dot value and each form control needs to have a name and then the ng model directive to appear with the ng form directive. And then it is also possible to achieve one way and two way data binding with template driven fonts. Now in the next video, let us see how to perform some basic validation for this template driven form. I'll see you guys in the next video.